Let's go again! FAA granted IFT-4. Launch license to SpaceX. Rocket Lab completed pre-fire mission. Hey, I'm Lucas. Welcome to the SpaceX community. Let's get started. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for the next Starship launch. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, has granted SpaceX a commercial launch license for the fourth test flight of its Starship rocket, with a planned launch time of 7 a.m. CDT on Thursday from South Texas. This license approval marks a significant milestone for SpaceX as it moves forward with its mission to demonstrate the reusability of its Starship and Super Heavy booster. The upcoming test flight follows three previous demonstration missions, each of which has seen incremental success. The last test flight, which took place on March 14th, saw the Starship complete an eight and a half minute climb into space before breaking apart during re-entry due to controllability issues. SpaceX has since addressed these issues and is now focused on demonstrating the rocket's ability to survive the extreme heating of re-entry and return to Earth safely. The Starship and Super Heavy booster have undergone significant preparations for this test flight. Last month, SpaceX conducted a wet dress rehearsal at its Starbase launch site in Texas, fully loading the rocket with cryogenic methane and liquid oxygen propellants. This rehearsal allowed the team to practice the launch sequence and ensure that all systems are functioning properly. The company also test-fired the booster and ship at the launch site, a crucial step in verifying the rocket's readiness for flight. In addition to these preparations, SpaceX has also installed components of the rocket's self-destruct system, FTS, which would activate to blow up the rocket if it flies off course. This system is a critical safety feature, designed to prevent the rocket from causing harm to people or property in the event of a malfunction. On Tuesday, SpaceX lowered the Starship upper stage from the top of the Super Heavy booster, presumably to perform final touch-ups to the ship's heat shield. This heat shield is a critical component of the Starship's re-entry system, comprising 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles that protect the ship's stainless steel structure from the intense heat generated during re-entry. With the Starship and Super Heavy booster fully prepared, the stage is set for a historic launch tomorrow. If all goes according to plan, SpaceX's launch team will begin loading 10 million pounds of super-cold propellants into the rocket around 49 minutes before liftoff. This process is a delicate one, requiring precise control to ensure that the rocket is fully fueled and ready for launch. Once the rocket is fully loaded, the launch team will conduct a series of automated checks to verify that all systems are functioning properly. If everything checks out, the computer controlling the countdown will give the command to light the booster's 33 Raptor engines. This will mark the beginning of the launch sequence, and the rocket will start its vertical climb off the launch mount. The Raptor engines are a marvel of modern rocketry, capable of producing more than 16 million pounds of thrust at full power. This is significantly more powerful than the engines used in SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which has a thrust of around 1.7 million pounds. The increased power is necessary to propel the larger Starship and Super Heavy booster into space. As the rocket gains altitude, it will exceed the speed of sound in about a minute and begin shutting down its 33 main engines around 2 minutes and 41 seconds after liftoff. The Super Heavy booster will then jettison and begin a descent back to Earth, while Starship's six Raptor engines will ignite to continue pushing the upper portion of the rocket into space. Starship's engines are expected to burn until T plus 8 minutes, 23 seconds, accelerating the rocket to near orbital velocity with enough energy to fly an arcing trajectory halfway around the world to the Indian Ocean. This will mark the end of the ascent phase of the mission, and the Starship will begin its descent back to Earth. The main objectives of this test flight are to demonstrate Starship's ability to survive re-entry and return to Earth safely, as well as to test the booster's ability to guide itself toward a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX officials hope to see the Super Heavy booster successfully navigate its way back to Earth and land safely in the ocean, paving the way for future flights that will aim to recover the booster back at the launch pad.
While SpaceX has a proven track record of recovering its Falcon 9 boosters, with over 240 successful rocket landings in a row, the company still faces significant challenges in recovering the larger Super Heavy booster. The booster's larger size and weight require more precise control during descent, and the company must also develop new technologies to enable the booster to survive the intense heat generated during re-entry. Despite these challenges, I am sure that SpaceX is confident in its ability to overcome them. The company has a long history of innovation and experimentation, and its team of engineers and technicians is among the most experienced in the industry. The successful recovery of the Super Heavy booster would mark a significant milestone in the development of SpaceX's reusable rockets, enabling SpaceX to launch payloads into space at a lower cost, with greater efficiency enabling more frequent and affordable launches of satellites, spacecraft, and even human missions to the moon and beyond. Just a quick update. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and make sure you've turned on the notification bell. Many viewers have mentioned that they're not receiving our videos, so this will help ensure you stay updated. Rocket Lab's successful launch of the second CubeSat for NASA's Prefire climate change mission on Tuesday, June 4th, marked a significant milestone in the study of Earth's warming. The Electron rocket carrying the tiny satellite lifted off from Rocket Lab's New Zealand site at 11.15 p.m. EDT, making it the second attempt for this mission after the first try on May 31st ended in a scrub due to an out-of-family sensor reading. The pre-fire mission, short for Polar Radiant Energy in the Far Infrared Experiment, is designed to study heat loss from Earth's polar regions gathering crucial data to better understand our warming world. The name Prefire aptly describes the mission's focus on measuring the far infrared radiation emitted from the Arctic and Antarctica, a crucial aspect of Earth's energy balance. Currently, there is a significant gap in measuring this type of energy, with no detailed measurements available. The water vapor content of the atmosphere, cloud presence, structure and composition all influence the amount of far-infrared radiation that escapes into space from Earth's poles. The Prefire mission seeks to fill this knowledge gap by collecting data on where and when far-infrared energy radiates from the Arctic and Antarctic environments into space. To achieve this, Rocket Lab launched two shoebox-sized CubeSats, the first on May 25th and the second on June 4th into circular orbits around Earth at an altitude of 326 miles. The second satellite was deployed into a slightly different orbit, and if all goes according to plan, the paths of the two satellites will cross every few hours near the planet's poles. Rocket Lab named the second mission Prefire and Ice, following the naming convention of the first launch. Ready, aim, Prefire. This marks the company's 49th orbital launch to date. While Rocket Lab is working towards making the first stage of the 59-foot-tall Electron reusable, no recovery activity occurred during these two launches. The successful deployment of the pre-fire CubeSats marks a significant milestone in the study of climate change and Earth's energy balance. As our understanding of the planet's warming continues to evolve, missions like Prefire play a vital role in providing valuable data to scientists, ultimately contributing to a better understanding of our planet's future. The Prefire mission is a crucial step forward in understanding the complex interactions between Earth's atmosphere, oceans and land surfaces. By measuring the far infrared radiation emitted from the polar regions, scientists can gain insights into the planet's energy balance and how it is affected by climate change. This knowledge is essential for developing accurate climate models and predicting future changes in Earth's climate. The two CubeSats launched by Rocket Lab are designed to work in tandem, providing a comprehensive view of the far infrared radiation emitted from the polar regions. Each satellite is equipped with a sophisticated instrument designed to measure the far infrared radiation with high accuracy. The data collected by the satellites will be transmitted back to Earth, where scientists will analyze it to gain a deeper understanding of the planet's energy balance. Rocket Lab's Electron rocket has proven to be a reliable launch vehicle for small satellite missions like Prefire. 
The company's ability to launch small satellites into precise orbits has made it an attractive option for scientists and researchers around the world. Thanks for watching today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for another great video tomorrow.